ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. I gotta get on this whole nip thing though. Like it's uh it's extremely disturbing. Now, cause like I said, I've been kind of sick. But the day the day before I got sick, Miss Denise me and her were talking on Telegraph, and she was like, have you seen Black Sam's interview with Big Boy? And I hadn't seen it, I just been so busy. I, I had seen clips on social media, but I hadn't gotten a chance to sit and like watch the whole interview and take it in. And so I sat down the other day, and I watched the entire interview, and I loved it. And um, it was just sad watching, because you could tell, you know, Black Sam was trying to say a lot without saying a lot. He was very emotional. And it was just a lot going on in that interview. And it kind of kind of put a lot of the pieces together for me for a lot of the stuff I've been thinking over the years. And I still can't believe it's been five years since Nipsey was taken, you know, since he was killed. It doesn't even feel like it. So a lot of people have been talking about this. Um, there have been rumors for years that certain people, that this was a setup. Like, let's just keep it real. It's been rumored for a long time. There was a lot of jealousy. If you guys know about Nipsey Hussle, not just his music, but his entrepreneurial spirit, he was very driven. He was very driven. He was the epitome of like, you know what I'm saying, getting rich, but then not leaving the hood. You know, like he, he had businesses right there um, in his neighborhood. He bought that whole clothing block, uh, well, the whole block where he had the clothing store for the marathon. He had um, a seafood joint there. Uh, he had a lot of stuff that he kept in his neighborhood. Whereas he could have just went to Beverly Hills, he could have went to the Valley. You know, he wanted to keep it in the neighborhood to show black entrepreneurship. Plus he was very much into like um, tech and all types of things like that. So he was doing a lot with his brand, a lot with his music, his last album, you know, he had gotten not Grammy nominated. So it was a lot going on. So I'm gonna start with playing you guys a few different clips. So we're gonna start with some of the clips from the interview that Black Sam did with Big Boy. And if you, I mean, you ain't even gotta be from LA, but Big Boy is a staple. And I remember I met him a long time ago when I lived in LA and I was doing interviews and he let me interview him real quick and talk to him. Like he, he's such a down to earth person. So for me, it made sense that after all these years, he decided to do a sit down with Big Boy. And it was cool to kind of hear, you know, Black Sam's come up too. Cause I didn't know a whole, whole lot about him. So it's very interesting to hear, like, you know, how he was out here hustling DVDs and CDs and how he got popped by the feds and, you know, it was crazy. So his backstory is very amazing as well. So let me go ahead here. We're going to watch this clip. Now, a lot of people, now, okay, let me say this before we even start. So the two main people that people feel like had something to do with it, like we all know Air Coder. He has been convicted and everything. I think they gave him like 26 years or something like that. But what people are saying is that Eric Coder is basically a send off. You could tell like Eric Coder is just not all there. Just like how, remember last week we were talking about YSL Woody? And I was telling y'all like in every clique, in every gang, they got the send off. They got the slow guy. You know what I mean? Like, you know, he can function, but you can tell he's not all there. He's kind of off. And so people call them the send off. And I believe that's what Eric Coder was. You know what I mean? He has some psychiatric issues, probably getting an SSI check. You know what I mean? And so a lot of people will, will kind of initiate them into gangs because they know if they get popped for something because they're kind of off, they either won't get a lot of time or they'll just put them in a mental hospital. They're kind of throwaways for the gang. And I believe that's, yeah, you know, that I believe that's what shitty cuz was. He was just, well, you know, a, a throwaway. And um, I think they used him, you know what I mean? The murder was premeditated. And I believe that they used him because they knew he wasn't all there. 
So now Big Sam is kind of speaking in depth on what he feels happens. So we're going to go ahead and listen to that. And also Cowboy. Now Cowboy was Nipsey's big homie. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen him before because after Nipsey died, he wouldn't shut the fuck up. He was like on every outlet from TMZ to E! News. You just saw him constantly doing interviews. And he's the one who wears the cowboy hat and um, the pigtails. And so a lot of people feel like, they don't feel like he necessarily killed Nip, but it's just kind of strange that you were supposed to be there on guard. And at the same time that Eric Holder was coming with his murderous plot, you went to lunch. But then like when you even go back and you watch a lot of his stories, a lot of people feel like his story has changed so many times. So I'm gonna play the clip of Black Sam speaking and then also the clip of um, Cowboy talking about it because now he's speaking out. And then also the clip of Big U because Big U is also speaking out as well. So it's gonna be about a few different clips. Somebody said Cowboy looks sus. Yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to this. I think this whole thing goes very, very deep. Um, I know it's easy to be like, oh, it's a government conspiracy, but no. Sounds like some gang shit. But let's go ahead and watch this here. Let me share my screen real quick. Again, if you can't hear me, leave and come back. I don't know what else to tell y'all. The volume is up. Everybody else can hear. Um, so I'm not sure. But let me go ahead and uh, pull this up here. Give me just a second. The public thought it was. They've seen somebody, Eric, and talked and... I mean, uh, you know, he, he already got convicted, so for me, without going into too many details, somebody come to the shop. They know when Hustle pull up, we in the doorway. You're going to see me with a hoodie on, and I got a pistol on me. You're going to see one of my one of the team members in the hoodie in the doorway with a pistol. That's protocol when Hustle pull up. <clears throat> so it's Sunday. It's busy. Why the niggas in there didn't follow, follow the protocol? I wasn't there. Why they didn't follow it? Maybe they just, fucking around helping the customer, doing some fucking customer service. This is what I'm thinking, trying to transition into some legitimate mm -hmm. selling clothes. But nobody was in the, nobody was in the doorway. And uh, from my understanding, no boy walked up, no shirt on first, to check the scene. Cause he... So listen to what he's saying. He's saying protocol is when Nick pulls up, people are in the doorway. You're supposed to be in the doorway. He's a, you know, that is the owner. He is the celebrity. And for some reason, all of a sudden, the, the normal guys who should be there in the doorway, you know what I'm saying, when Nip pulls up, they weren't there. So he said initially he thought they were probably doing customer service, helping customers, but then we find out later that's not what was going on. So that's what he's explaining. He knows what, know what's going on in that parking lot. And um, had a conversation, probably seen nobody was in the doorways, checked hustle, had on shorts, checked everybody else left. They say he came back with a red shirt on, tiptoed through the alley, and went right and started shooting. So to me, that's premeditated. Number one, there's no red shirts in the hood. <clears throat> you can't buy no red shirt. No, no liquor store sell no red shirt. Number two, when the nigga come through the alley with a red shirt, that's the throw off. Or the Bloods did it. Or the Inglewood families did it. Or the BP did it. That's the throw off. Red shirt. So for me, he felt he was supposed to do a job or somebody sent him or whatever. And he was nervous. He was supposed to hit that alley with that red shirt immediately. But he didn't do that. He came in and he wanted to check the scene. He wanted to make sure he wasn't getting into a shootout. That's my thoughts on it. And can't nobody tell me nothing about that because it just don't make no sense. It's not random, you know. I know hustle. <clears throat> you know, ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna say nothing crazy to hustle. There was no argument, you know. There was no sense of threat. You know, and it's broad daylight, man, and it's, you know, a lot of unanswered questions, man. You'll be trying to get away. You'll be trying to get that back. Okay, so that was Black Sam talking about how Eric Holder, when he first came up, he didn't have on a shirt. He was kind of scoping, you know, the location, whatever, you know, looking like who's all there. Then he went back in the alley and grabbed a red shirt. So that should have been a, a red flag, no pun intended, because... This is a Crip neighborhood. Everybody, you know what I'm saying, they don't even sell red shirts in Crip neighborhoods. So all of a sudden, this guy is coming up with a red shirt, and that's not raising any type of suspicion. So he feels like this was definitely premeditated. He was sent there to do a job. 
So now this is Cowboy. This next clip is of Cowboy, and Cowboy is talking, and he's basically responding back to what Black Sam is saying because a lot of people have been attacking Cowboy. Like, yeah, you're sus because why weren't you there? Where was your gun? Why weren't you there protecting Nip when you're claiming that, you know, you're his big homie or whatever? And then a lot of people get on Cowboy because he took the stand against Air Coder, which is like, you know, I don't, I get it, it's it's hood politics, but do y'all want this man being convicted or not? Because, yeah, he took the stand, he was crying, you know, he told what he knew, but then if he didn't take the stand, then that would have been an issue. So he couldn't win for lose with that. So I'm going to go ahead and play this clip of uh, Cowboy addressing Black Sam. And the volume is all the way up, so I don't I don't know what's going on with some people's audio. So I, I'm sorry, but I don't know what to tell y'all. Y'all might have to just watch the playback because everybody else is saying they can hear it. And whatever, whatever incentive, you know. So he was high and he done something stupid. That's how I feel. You know, so, but that's my opinion, you know. Uh, but for somebody to put false narratives out there uh, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I checked out the, uh, the Black Sam interview uh, and it was it was a heartfelt interview, you know, uh, there was a lot of stuff uh, just left up in the air, you know. Uh, and one thing about this internet, uh, you can't leave nothing up in the air. Because <clears throat> if you leave it up in the air, then the internet is going to run with it. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, my advice to Big Bro, you know, uh, uh, jumping into this internet shit, you know, uh, uh, you know, speak your mind, you know. Uh, but let's not leave it in the air. We got something to say, let's say it. You know what I mean? Let's just say it direct, you know, uh, so we won't leave, uh, we won't leave the, the world to come up with their own conclusion. Okay. So y'all heard what Cowboy said. He's kind of mad at Big Sam, Black Sam because he feels like he left it up in the air. I don't think Black Sam left anything in the air. There's only so much he can say, right? He's not going to come out and be like, yeah, you did it, Big You said Like, he's not going to do that. You're talking about street people. His brother was already killed, so he has to watch what he says. And then a lot of these dudes are ratchet. They will not sue. A lot of these gangbangers will take you to court and sue for defamation. So it's like he has to watch his words, but I don't see what he left up in the air, sir, because you weren't there. You claim in the first, when you when you first went live five years ago when he was doing all these um these interviews, he was saying that he went to go get lunch. Lunch? Ain't no fucking lunch. Nipsey just pulled up. Your job is to protect him. You don't just get to go eat. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I don't think Sam left anything in the air. Sam don't fool with Cowboy no more. He's never really fooled with Big U like that. Sam was never a gangbanger. That was Nipsey's thing. Sam was always trying to pull his little brother away from the gangs. You know what I'm saying? And just to just be more legit and stay away from that. But Nipsey was raised in that neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? And so that was his affiliation. So it's almost like a tug of war between him trying to keep his brother away from the gangs because Sam could just kind of see like all the nefarious shit attached to Big U and them. And then Nipsey still showing them loyalty. But I think, you know, I, I don't understand why Cowboy's mad. He's feeling like, oh, you're planting seeds. You're leaving stuff up in the air. No, people were not on their post. People were not doing their job. And I think Sam had every right to point that out. People have been saying this for years. So now we're going to go ahead and listen to what Big U has to say. So give me just a second. We're going to go ahead and play this really quick. So basically, before we get started, he's getting trolled, right? So everybody is coming at him. You killed Nip. We just watched the Black Sam interview. So they're like dragging him on social media. But again, you know, he's gangster. So he's acting like he don't want to answer. But then he is low key answering the, the critics. What club we going to? Club 11. We're going to Club 11 tonight. The hottest shit I've ever had is Club 11. Yeah. All I do is uplift people, man. I don't worry about this shit, man. Y'all gotta understand, man. People gonna talk. These lanes make money off of using Big U name. You know what I mean? They ain't gonna never pull up. Right. One thing is for certain, right? 
everything they say did you did, man. Is, they got me doing so much more. I don't even know what the, <laughs> then I didn't do it. Got a whole bunch of different places at one time. At one time. They say, y'all, you know there's another new one too? I got into it with Fats. Let me give y'all the information on it. I ain't never got into it with Fats. Fats is my long boy. Ever in my life, me and Fats ever got into it with nobody. Never. Ever. 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 So, you got to figure that one out anyway. So, all that shit that we was telling y'all, y'all stupid for listening to any of that shit. But, y'all been listening and responding to this. These niggas been saying for the last six, seven years, why you gonna stop? No, longer than that. Longer than that. Y'all was accusing me of shit that I ain't even do. And what's funny, I wasn't even in town. So, figure that one out. I'm jealous of a motherfucker. Okay, so they're talking about uh, Fats. Fats was one of Nip's really close friends. And they're saying that when Nip and Big U, they had got, they were about to get into a fight. Fats jumped in and he fought Big U on behalf of Nip. And then like literally a few days later, Fats was killed. So that's what he's addressing. But now what's really interesting is he's saying that he wasn't in time when the shooting happened. But what's also strange is that he also didn't go to the funeral so a lot of people were clocking his tea about that like he added he, like literally everybody in la who was anybody was there you had people flying in from overseas to go to the staple center everybody was there but big U, and big U, you, you know what i'm saying at one point in time was managing nipsey so that has always come off as strange to a lot of people that he didn't go to the funeral I get this shit correct. Yeah. I got the game. I'm getting a million dollars a year, but I'm jealous of somebody. I'm hating on somebody. Come on, man. I'm having fun. I got nothing to gain. Nothing. You either got to be gaining something to hurt somebody or preventing something to hurt somebody. Y'all stupid. Y'all sound real stupid. Like stupidity. So no, no, no. That be thinking it and go with the hype and all that. Yeah. That's what you want. That be hating it. Must be. So those, when you know somebody, mm -hmm. you know me, you know the person, yeah. you know me, it'd be different story. But now, you know, everybody, everything is social media and all that. That's what it is. It's they get on that show if they want to. They can say, yeah, exactly. They get on that show if they want to. But uh, facts is the facts. Yeah, that's what man. This he was a brother. Yeah. He was my little yeah. man. We ain't gonna even talk about that no more. I mean, yeah. just let that be no, I don't know. Yeah. A long time. It's stupid. I, like I said, we ain't even gonna address that shit because it's stupid. Man, it's like, stupid. you really stupid and you really f niggas. You know what I mean? Y'all should understand when somebody trying to sell y'all something. The biggest selling name on the West Coast, you gotta say Big U name. You wanna sell something, Big U. They wanna do something, Big U. They wanna do Big U. Big U. Y'all don't get this shit yet? They died down then next week. Watch when they trying to sell a documentary, a movie, a book, or something. Big you. That shit, you know. I got something you want to see. Something you want to hear somebody say something that you don't know. That's gonna be earth shattering. Let, let keep on. I got. We gonna go on Damu Keyway conversation. I'm gonna do Keyway conversation. I'm gonna get off here. You want me to say nothing else? You know what I mean? All positive. Okay. Now, what's very interesting that he keeps saying that, oh, everybody keeps bringing up Big U's name. If y'all don't know who Big U is, y'all have to go Google. He's, I mean, he's big. He's legit. He been, he's like one of the top crips um, from back in the day. But anyhow, Black Sam never said Big U's name. So I don't understand how he's trying to act like Black Sam and uh, Big Boy are trying to, you know, are trying to use him for clout when... He never mentioned his name. Everybody else is mentioning Big U's name, but everybody has been mentioning Big U's name. It's not even because of this interview. The interview just kind of basically put together what a lot of us have been thinking for the past five years. All positive. You know what I mean? I'm going to keep giving to these kids, keep helping these kids. I'm going to keep staying humble. Somebody in the chat called him Big L. Shut up. <laughs> 
difference I'm asking you talking about big U shit more like big L. You know what I mean? And you know what's crazy? I don't be on the internet game banging. Yeah, I don't be on the internet game banging, talking about no gang shit. Why they keep comparing me to the gang shit? I'm 58 years old. All right, y'all. He's 58 and still on that goofy shit. So, so that so that was the main people that people are kind of confronting and dragging on social media and feeling like they have something to do with Nip's death. So now, on top of that going viral, there's a lady, she's going viral as well. Um, her name is Mika. Now, she's from L.A., and she's talking about the situation now big you was saying that everybody is talking about him like youtubers because this was like a long live that was just a snippet of what he said but he was also addressing youtubers saying that people are using his name for clout people are using his name to go viral they're just trying to do this to get a bag well there are other people talking that are not monetized and they're saying the same thing so everybody's not using this for a bag or to go viral a lot of it is people are finally putting what they feel is, you know, two and two together. So let me go ahead. We're going to watch what Mika had to say here. Give me just a second and share my screen. Oh, off, of, uh, off that Black Sam interview. Now, y'all, I don't know, bro. I don't know if Big U sent shit, but when that shit with Nipsey first popped off, when it first, first happened, all of everybody in L.A. thought Big U snitch. We all thought that. We all did. We thought it was Big U, and then, and then we thought, people was like, no, it wasn't Big U, da, da, da. And then it was like, oh, yeah, it was the government. Like, come on now. That's what the world was saying, the government on some weird shit. But all of L.A., yeah, we all thought Big U did it. We already been felt like it. Because, like Black Sun <coughs> said, I, I didn't even watch that interview. I honestly didn't. I saw a couple of clips or whatever. But, um... Living in LA, I remember when um, Big U and Nip got into it because Nip didn't want to um, be under his label no more. Because Big U was trying to like, Big U had bought the Crenshaw label, the Crenshaw brand, and shit like that. And um, yeah, like basically trying to like extort Nip and had him in a fucked up ass deal. So when Nip finally got out of that deal, you know what I'm saying, um, he went about his way or whatever, and Big U didn't like that. And um, so they had like animosity or whatever. This is just me living in LA, I know this. And then um, I remember when Nip started with YG and he had brought YG to the 60s. And um, when he brought YG to the 60s, I remember Big U was trying to pop shit about it. Like how you bringing this uh, whoop de whoop to the hood, this and this and that. And Nip like, Nip took, Nip, Nip uh, pilt out his shirt. And he was like, nah, get out because woo woo. But Nip had to run phase to have YG in the six O's. But he did that. He did that. But Big U was trying to give him a hard time because Big U was mad that um, he wasn't like trying to give him no money. You know, he didn't want to be under that deal no more. So that's what that was. It, uh, so I remember that. So then when Nip died, because I remember Nip didn't want nothing to do with Big U. So when he got killed, or whatever, all the LA was like, Big you did that, Big you did that. Cause who who would have known? Like who who would have known? Like people, you had to be a part of the six O's. You had to be um in his circle to know. Everybody knew like Nip, if you saw that Maybach on Slauston, that Nip was there. Everybody knew that. We always knew that. Um frontline and that dying over that is crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so everybody knew that his, when his main back is on Crenshaw, that Nip is there or whatever. But like Black Sun said, I seen that clip when he was like, usually be having burners and stuff. That's what, when you live in LA, we all know that it's like, you all, it's always burners and it's like in the spot. That was the spot. So it's always burners up in there, some protection and it's, hello, it's Nipsey, bro. So you'd be stupid. Every, all in LA kept saying like, bro, why nobody had no burners? Why nobody sh was shooting back? Why nobody was doing nothing? Like, nobody shot back. Nobody did nothing. And um, that is crazy. They had no burners, right? So when we looked at that, all of L.A. was just like, nah, that was an inside job. 
Cause there's no way in hell you got Nip in the parking lot on Slauson and Crenshaw and there's no burners like at all. So it was like, so, so big, you did big, you pay all in, in the spot not to have the burners. I mean, you know, to like lack, to be lacking. And it was like, or and like did, did also on top of sending, um, sh cause like how he came the two times, he came the first time he scoped out the scenery. We saw all of that, right? That, that was very evident. And then, in a, and then he come back in a red shirt to shoot old boy, to shoot Nipsey. But it's like, usually in LA, like in a spot like that, Nipsey be on point looking at everything. So after the first time he came, they should have recognized him and they seen him coming back. They should have been like, oh, this is the second time. That's like when a car going around your, going around your block. You're like this car just went around the block like twice. And when, when it come again, that's the same car. You be on that type of stuff. So it's like, I feel like that's why Black Sam don't with none of them because he felt like like them either fucked up or they was in on it. So I get it. I get it. I totally get it. But is somebody gonna do something about it? Mm, probably not. Um, Cause they've been talking about that for a long time inside of LA. Y'all just getting a whiff of how black Sam feel, but he been known who felt like that. That's why he don't fuck with the six O's. Ain't been with the six O's. That's why he don't sign off on nothing. Nobody trying to use his brother's shit. None of that. I'm gonna say that was just a bad month day. It was a bad month day. But I don't think it was just a bad month day. I do think it was something or something. Um, Cowboy looks suspect in America. All of them look suspect. That's why Black Sam don't fuck with none of them. They all look suspect. I felt like it wasn't just, it was just a shooter, bro. It was more than that. Like, it was more than involved. He was just a shooter. No burners is crazy. That's a fact. No burners on Slauson and and Crenshaw was crazy. Vicky was, was in on this. That ain't no way shitty would it give him up. I think that if Vicky was in on it, for sure, I think shitty. I don't know. Because, bro, you remember, after that after, after that happened, they went and, and shot up this family house. They, they wiped out his whole family. Baby, mama, mama, granny. The niggas dead. Like they went and did John. That's now let me say this. She's not lying. Cause I remember like after Nipsey was killed, um, I remember people in LA telling me about what happened to old boy's family. Like literally like that whole week. You know what I'm saying? So she's she's not lying about that. Burners are guns for people asking what's a burner. But um she's not lying about that. There was like retaliation came instantly. And it almost seemed like they took out his family to like silence him or scare him even more. But what she's saying is that if they were really there to protect Nip, why didn't they have any guns? Like, how was he able to come to like there's there's surveillance cameras you guys can go and, you know, pull up the court case. He came to and from like several times. And then the last time he came wearing a red shirt, like how is this not raising any suspicion? You know, how was he able to shoot him that many times and nobody shot him back? You know, so the whole thing is like crazy. But what she's saying, she's saying a lot of truth. She's saying a lot of the stuff that people have been saying in L.A. for years. Also, you know, Big U is acting like they were like in this, you know, cool relationship and everything was all good and he loved Nip. But if you guys remember back in 2021, uh, Nipsey Hussle's estate. That's why she's saying Black Sam don't sign off on nothing with the Crips. Remember, they got into a battle with the Crips. The Crips went and trademarked and started Crips LLC. And so uh, Big Sam got into a battle with them. I'll show y'all that article when she gets done talking. Same day. That people's dead behind that. And it's like, most people would have been like, I ain't got shit to live for. Y'all killed my people. Big, if Big U, that's, that's, you know, I gotta play devil's advocate. Because if Big U was actually in on it, I would be like, you paid me or you, you did whatever, whatever, and I did not, and I, and I held up my, my end of the bargain. But now my whole family got killed behind this shit. You can't even keep my people safe. You know what I'm saying? Which is stupid, because why would you go kill somebody like Nipsey and then leave your mama and them on the block in the 60s? I would, you supposed to get them up out of there before you even went to scope the scenery. So, you know, like for me, I probably would have been mad and hurt and feeling vindictive. I probably would have been like, you know what? That put me up to it. That I'm just telling you, I'm keeping it real. I don't got stuff to live for. They wiped up my whole family. 
after I did this n the favor. I don't give a He said I was in the jungles when it happened. Get up everyone up fast. There ain't no way paperwork on shitty ever snitching. There ain't no paperwork. I didn't say snitch. I'm saying if devil's advocate is they trying to say big you put him up to it. If Big U actually put him up to it, they kid, after he killed Nipsey, his whole family got killed, wiped out within hours. They were dead. We know this. And so, because they still lived in the 60s. So therefore, if it was me, ain't no way Big U could have kept me quiet after that. Because I did you a favor or I did whatever the f And you couldn't even keep my family safe. So, you got nothing to live for at that point. PC up. Tell on them. Tell on them. All right, so y'all just heard what she had to say about the situation. Um, there's light coming in. I'm trying to get out the way so the light is not hitting my face. It's really bright out today. But um, so that's what she had to say about the situation. Now, let me show y'all the article. This was from 2021. So if these folks really love Nip the way that they're trying to claim that they love Nip, then why were they trying to, like, take from his estate? You know what I'm saying? The whole thing is just strange. Where is it at here? Okay, here we go. Nipsey Hustle Estate settles trademark suit with Crips LLC. Um, Crips LLC applied for the Marathon Continues trademark in 2019. This was in May of 2019. This was really like a month after Nipsey died. They try to file for the trademark. Um, the suit by the estate of Raps and Nipsey Hustle against the Crip Gang over the use of the Marathon Continues trademark was dismissed by the Central District of California. The parties reached a, a confidential settlement. It won't let me pull anything else up. You got to pay for this article. But so it's it was like a lot of like shady shit that happened after Nip died. And that is why Black Sam does not fool with like most of these guys. The whole thing is just insane. Um, the more you look into it, the rabbit hole goes deep. I definitely feel like there was some type of setup there, some type of issue, that this was done on purpose to silence him. Um, they were mad because he had more effect, more clout, more notoriety in the hood. You know, a lot of people looked up to him. Nip was actually doing things for the community, whereas other people were not. And I just think he just became, you know, like the old saying goes, too big for your britches. He just became bigger than than the program and other people felt like they weren't able to eat off of him. And it bred a lot of jealousy. And I think that that's may of what happened, you know, to take him out. And obviously his brother is definitely feeling away now that he's speaking out on the situation. But also, what also happened a few years ago is... This video, everybody is now pulling this video. It's going back viral. This video was posted five years ago, but it's going back viral of Big U basically laughing. You're going to see like at the 140 mark, somebody says justice for Nipsey and him and this other dude in the background, they start laughing. So people found that very, very strange as well. So we're going to watch this real quick. Justice for them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so who laughs at somebody writing justice for Nip? Like, if that's really, you know, your little homie and you really want the best for him, you're going to be like, yeah, justice for Nip. We need to find out who did it. But he starts laughing. He looks back at his friend. It's almost like they're laughing at an inside joke. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Chicago drill rappers. Like, every time they take out an op, they do little shit like those, like King Von eating cereal in the car, you know, uh, them like when FBD Juck, when FBD Duck, sorry, when he got killed, how they were saying little things on social media. It's just weird. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people, to me, that didn't sit well with me at all when he laughed at that part. So a lot of people were going back and looking at that. 
And then also, let's not forget, Charleston White has been talking about this for over a year, that the Crips set up Nipsey. And then also, um, Loose Cannon, he also came out and claimed that he had received a phone call 30 minutes before Nipsey was killed from Big U. So we're going to go ahead and watch this clip of Charleston White. Well, no, actually, hold on. Let me play the clip of uh, Loose Cannon first, and then we'll come back to Charleston. Let's go to 28. Okay, we're going to watch this clip first real quick. All right. On the phone, he FaceTimed me. So he FaceTimed me and stuff like that. He was like, Nipsey just got killed. I'm like, sick, so I didn't hear that. So I hang up with him. I called Nipsey, and I'm like, Nipsey. What's up? He was like, oh, what's up with it? Nipsey like, answered. Nipsey yeah. answered. He answered the phone. And I was like, I love you, cuz, or whatever like that. Well, Did you, you tell him the call you just got? Or you didn't even mention it? I didn't Nipsey? mention it. You and it, that's that's what fucked me up, because my cousin is um, Nipsey baby mama. You get what I'm saying? So it was like, I could have probably stopped it, or it had it. Um... Stop what? Fuck you mean, that? Fuck you talking about? No, because listen, so after I talked to Nipsey, and I was like, yeah, I love you, cuz, or whatever like that, I'll see you later, or whatever. So I hung up the phone, I thought, Big, you gave wrong information. 30 minutes later, the homies blowing me up like they just killed Nipsey. And so I'm like... Wait, 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 wait. You get a call from Big U telling you Nipsey just got killed. Yeah. You panic called Nip. Nip answer the phone. Yeah, and uh, you we like were just okay. talking to him regular. So regular. it's like at the end of the day, I didn't even think about it because you don't even up. warn him that you got that call from dude. No, because their relationship was so fucked up. It'd be like they be hot one minute, and then they be cold the next minute, and then they be lukewarm. Like you and just thirty never minutes knew. after you get off the phone with Nip, he get killed. Yeah, I got it. So you think it. he hit you a, a little too early? Yeah, he hit me a little bit too early because uh, the homie Shitty. All right, so y'all just heard what Loose Change was saying. And that, I think that interview was like six months ago when he was saying that. So, like I said, everything that Black Sam was saying to Big Boy, people are just starting to add things together. So now let's go ahead. We're going to watch Charleston White really quick here. Um... He talked about this a year ago. He was saying the same thing. Okay, we're gonna play this one here. All right. Not a lone actor in that. If you go back and follow the details, Nip and Big U got into it. Big U hit Nip Daddy across the head with a bat. His brother had to come out and shoot the gun. Hey, y'all get out. Say, Nip, come on, nigga, we finna come beat you. Because I don't want to pay that $20,000. You say it's over this equipment. But the white folks is pulling me away from the set. I met a Jewish white boy on the front row at the Los Angeles, Angeles Lakers ball game. Me and this white boy getting drunk. We started talking business, business ideas. This white boy, see, I'm a sharp nigga. This white boy pulled me into business in ventures, business ventures, the vector sector, right? So now I'm being expanded, but now they pulling me away from the set. The set have made it known nobody's bigger than the set. Nobody's bigger than the program. Nip had gotten bigger than the program. Quando is a reminder that nobody's bigger than the program. But Nip had gotten bigger than the set. Well, what do you mean by that, Charleston? Think about when Big U and all the other big homies in the OGs in the hood. They standing in front of Nip shit. They standing on the street corners. When Nip pull up in that motherfucking Platinum Jaguar, he pull up in that motherfucking Platinum Jaguar, nigga, them fresh ass Puma with all them goddamn chains on, and then he opened up the door, he got a Hollywood bitch coming up out of there, London Lauren, one of the baddest Hollywood bitches we done seen. When the little homies see Nip pull up, do you think they gonna stay here and talk to the big homies, big you and them? They gonna make an about face and say, y'all, there go Nip. And they gonna run away from the big homies. As all the excitement going to Nip, every, all the bras, all the, everybody the store, what you think the big homies sitting back saying? Now Nip is growing. Nip 
that Monday had a meeting with the L.A. County, with the L.A. Police Department on, on gang intervention program before he come up dead. So now Nip and Big U done fill out over $20,000 worth of equipment, so they say. But it's really over $20,000 nigga extortion fee to pay for protection. Yeah, Nip, Nip was being extorted too. He had to pay for protection. That's why they got that video of him that WAC 100 say they got of him. Mm. Why would they let WAC even make that statement? So, so peep game. So you think them niggas ain't saying, man, that nigga there, woo, woo, woo? And, he, and his brother go shoot at us? That nigga brother pull a gun out on Big U, nigga. His brother pull a, nigga, you don't pull no gun out on no nigga. Every street nigga know, nigga, y'all don't give a damn where you shot that gun at. You pulled it out on me, nigga. And big Black Sam ain't never been down with the set. Black Sam have always tried to pull them niggas out of Nip's business and get him away from the set. But you can't do that, cuz. Quando Rondo is a baby, my nigga. That nigga's a kid. That's why he cried at that murder scene like that. As a, as a, if I'm in the gang, homie, and I'm in the set, and I see one of the homies break down like that, homie, nah, homie, y'all give him a pass. He meant that's a mental breakdown, nigga. We claim we love one another. We claim, nah, homie. All right, so y'all just heard what Charleston White had to say about the situation. Like I said, he was saying that a year ago. So I feel like there's some shit in the mix, okay? I feel like there's a lot going on with this whole Nipsey Hussle situation, and this is why um, he's being talked about again a lot um, since his killing five years ago because of that interview that Black Sam did. And this is why, you know, again, like they say in the South, a hit dog will holler. And I just feel like there, there is a lot. I think there's a lot more to it than some people know. Um, and the public may never know like the full truth, but I do feel like it was a setup. Um, it was a perfect storm, unfortunately. And I feel like Eric Holder was like the perfect send off. There's one in every crew. So I'll leave it at that. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.